my cousin OD'd in, I uh, can't remember the year, but he OD'd in the same moment uh, my other aunt passed away. And then I think, I can't remember, oh, and then another friend of mine um, killed himself. So it was um, loss after loss after loss back to back. And then the, the, the difference in subjectively experiencing those people as being here with me versus the loss is deeply, um, I I'm so grateful for it that, you know, when I think about my cousin Will and I feel him here with me, uh, that was so much more resourceful for me. And, you know, I think it will be for you too. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I wanna talk about the difference between grieving resourcefully versus grieving unresourcefully. So I was scrolling through Steve Andreas's website, uh, his blog, uh, some time ago, and I highly recommend, you know, if you ever catch that, bu that bug, that fancy, uh, where you feel compelled to go look through Steve Andreas's blog, it will be one of the most rewarding flights of fancy that you can follow that uh, Steve to me it was one of the most important contributors to NLP because he really is a modeler and Steve noticed uh, at some point that people in the grieving process even long after they had experienced a loss that they really weren't processing the loss in what he called a resourceful way. That people who said they were over, you know, that you could talk to somebody years and years after a loss, and there was kind of a sullen acceptance. You know, they weren't necessarily experiencing those really difficult emotions intensely, but there was still this really sullen, um, just acceptance of something awful. And that's, Steve thought, we can grieve more resourcefully. And so it started this curiosity about what is resourceful grief? And I know you're probably familiar with that model of grief that says, you know, first there's denial, then there's anger, bargaining, acceptance, all that, right? And I would suggest that that's a model, and some people would discredit that model, by the way, but because it was first to market, most of us have kind of bought into it and accepted that that's the way that we process grief. Well, Steve got curious and he started to look for people who he thought were grieving resourcefully. And Steve, Steve is kind of an exquisite guy in that sense that his criteria is much higher than most people's. So he does, he searches and in fact, you find that there are people who seem to deal with grief in a much more resourceful way. That when they remember the person that they lost, you can see a warm emotion come over that person's face rather than the other people who, when they reflect on that person, there's still a sense of loss there, even years after. And again, they may have accepted the loss, but there's still a unresourceful state of being. Now, I don't know about you personally, but I don't want my legacy to be one in which people mourn me and grieve me. I want my life to positively impact people and that when they think of me after I'm gone, I want it to be in such a way that's extremely positive. I want people to reflect back on the times that we had and smile and laugh and feel good. That if we could choose how we're gonna be remembered, to me, I want people to feel good when you think, not you, but when people think about me after I'm gone, maybe you, anyway. Uh, so Steve, Steve found these people and he found a couple things happen. Uh, number one, how is that person remembering the loss? Um, and he, I, let me rewind, I wanna rephrase that. So how is the person reflecting on, how do I wanna phrase this? Um, well, I'll tell you what unresourceful grievers do. And it's natural, uh, because it's a painful event, people have the tendency to remember the end of the experience. So after we lose someone, people will typically associate to the end, to the loss of that person. So they'll remember their death, for example, or, or that person in the hospital. And this is unresourceful grieving. 
In NLP, we talk about association, disassociation. They will be associating to the end. This is unresourceful, right? In resourceful grief, people have stepped out of the end. They push those images off into the distance. They get perspective and distance and space from those to the point where they start to remember the positive times where this person was in your life. That you, um, you know, the, the positive memories, the good times, and they associate themselves to those good moments. So that's the first thing. What is the person who's grieving? If you're a coach and you're guiding somebody through this, what are they associating to? Right, and in, in, in NLP, what we would do as an NLP coach is train them uh, to habituate, to automatically remember the good times. Now, that's one aspect of resourceful grieving. The other aspect comes down to our sense of connection. Connection, connection, connection. And I want to make a suggestion to you that I think is true. And you're gonna need to buy into this if you're gonna grieve resourcefully. And it's this idea that connection is an inside job. It's not an outside job. So, so when you look at people who grieve resourcefully, they maintain a sense of connection with the person even after their death. They'll say things like, I feel like he's here with me. You'll hear this in people's language. You know, um, when my uncle passed, his wife, uh, she would experience dreams where, you know, he would visit her in dreams and it gave her the sense that he was always there. And, and so you'll hear this in people's language. They'll be like, no, uh, even though he's passed on, he's here with me, she's here with me. It's the subjective experience of staying connected to that person that allows people to grieve resourcefully versus unresourceful grief where people experience it as disconnection, a loss from that person. Now, remember a moment ago I said connection is an inside job. What do I mean by that? Well, you've, you likely have had the experience, I, I know you have, where there are people that you're extremely connected to, right, best friends, intimate partners, family members, uh, mentors, there are times in your life where you feel really connected to someone, right? I mean, if you look at uh, the, when people have, when people like a relationship that they have with somebody, the quality of that connection is, is wonderful. It's a wonderful connection that you have. What's interesting about that is that you feel that connection whenever you think about that person, whether or not they're in the room with you. So for example, I, uh, you know, I'm connected to my parents, but they're not here at the beach. I feel as if I'm still connected to them. I have a, a friend and we, we, are, we have a good connection. And I feel that connection even though he's not here. Connection is, some, is something that happens subjectively on the inside of you. And you know this, if you think about even those same people in moments of difficulty when you're angry, frustrated, uncomfortable for some reason, they can be in the same room with you, but you'll disconnect from them. You know, that, that good friend of mine, we had an argument, we disconnected even though we were in the same room. Physical presence does not determine your subjective experience of feeling connected to another person, right? When we say connection happens on the inside, it's because of how you think about that person in such a way where you either feel that connection or you don't. So. Um, resourceful grievers have changed subjectively or they subjectively think about that person in such a way where they still feel that presence and in coaching what we would do is we would uh, do a mapping across as the name of the technique where we would elicit the submodalities of connection and we would bring the person who they lost into those submodalities. In other words, the subjective, you would train your brain to think about that person in a way where you still feel that connection. And this is very resourceful. Now, there are ecological issues here, right? Ecology issues. So we don't want, you know, uh, uh, when we do these exercises, the coach that's guiding you through this has to be familiar and uh, have exquisite calibration, have exquisite ecology and understanding of ecology and ability to frame and reframe things. 
Uh, because when I've done this with people in the past, one thing that gets in the way and we have to reframe it and get around it is that the client will say things like, well, the person's not actually here. And you know, I've done a lot to explain on this video that connection is an inside job, but we have to find a framework that works for the client. So people with spiritual belief systems, they typically have a framework that allows them to experience that person as here. Um, and you have to be careful. You have to be careful how you create their understanding of it so that you know, they don't actually think that, you don't wanna violate reality, so to speak. So there are some ecology issues there. Uh, but I will say that for me, this was a tremendously healing and soothing process. You know, uh, my, my cousin OD'd in, I uh, can't remember the year, but he OD'd in the same moment uh, my other aunt passed away. And then I think, I can't remember, oh, and then another friend of mine um, killed himself. So it was um, loss after loss after loss back to back. And then the, the, the difference in subjectively experiencing those people as being here with me versus the loss is deeply, um, I I'm so grateful for it that, you know, when I think about my cousin Will and I feel him here with me, uh, that was so much more resourceful for me. And, you know, I think it will be for you too. If you are skilled nlp -er, in other words, you can do mapping across on yourself, you can transform resistance, you know how to do those things, then do this for yourself. Um, if you don't know how to do those things, find you someone who can. Uh, a couple other things to think about. Uh, you can use this process for different types of loss. So the loss of a job, the loss of a dream, the loss of a career, the loss of a sense of self. That if you know your child, something happens to your child and then you start question, you, you lose your sense of being a mother, for example. This works equally well for that. Olympians, right? After they, they stop being Olympic athletes, they lose this ambition that they had. Many, most Olympic athletes after the Olympics become extremely depressed about that loss. And so those, you, this technique will work for that, works extremely well. Um, in ambiguous losses, where you don't know if the person is alive or dead, this is also effective. Um, what else? Oh, pre-grieving, pre-grieving. Let's say, for example, someone has a family member who's terminally ill and the intense pain of that situation is causing them to not be able to spend time with that person. I'm mind reading here. Uh, actually, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna go into that, but let's say, for example, um, end, of, end of life for somebody you love or care about and you're grieving before they're gone in other words, you're already worried about the loss, you're already experiencing the loss, in your mind you're playing that out, you're gonna miss out on the moments that you have with that person while they're here. So pre-grieving, we can do the same process where we help a client um, experience the loss ahead of time as a connection state so that it takes the negative emotions out of the loss. They come into that place of connection and that way they're resourceful while the person is still here with them. So they can actually be there and really enjoy that person while they're still here. Uh, check out Steve Andreas. Uh, you know, Nick Kemp said, Steve Andreas is the brightest light in NLP. Yeah, hard to argue with that. There are a lot of them though. There are a lot of bright lights. Um, have you followed my channel? Have you liked it? Have you, are you commenting? Are you subscribing? You know the algorithm loves it when you do that, so make sure you do. Uh, if you would like coaching, uh, if you go to my banner, you can click on a link to sign up for a discovery call and we can discuss uh, getting in coaching. All right, take care.